I'll just do it. Once he gets in here, pulls on this, bang on. Up goes the spring pole. Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how we traditionally set up a spring pole snare and a flip up snare. This is the traditional toggles that we would use when, when uh, making spring pole snares. So this is the side of the toggle right here that will face the rabbit's trail. This side of the toggle will hook into a notch or into another V-stick that's been shoved down into the ground. All right, so the first cut you make when you're cutting them off is this little, uh, the little hook part of the, of the toggle. You gotta make sure that the first cut is in line with, with that. Can you see? And what that does, that hides the fresh cut. And it won't be a fresh cut even because you cut this well ahead of time and you let this dry out. Because right now, if I was to set this under tension, this here part here could, could break. Once this dry, this becomes hard as a rock. You wouldn't, wouldn't believe how much tension this could hold. So then you just tie your string at the top and your snare somewhere here in the center. Stick that into a, a notch you either cut into a tree or another one of these much larger that you drive into the ground upside down so the they'll hook onto each other like this if you know what i mean okay for argument's sake we're going to say that this is the rabbit trail and and uh, we want to put a snare there so what you would do is you you would get your toggle and you would hammer this into the ground <clears throat> drive it down so that when you got your so you got rope tied to this, remember? So there's an upward pressure. You got a, a springy, a small springy fir tree or something that you got your rope tied onto and your snare tied on here. So when this drops down, it'll hook in here. We'll make that a little bit wider. It would hook in here and your snare comes out and captures the uh, the rabbit trail. So now, no matter which way the rabbit goes, if he pulls in that direction, boom, this will slide off and lift up. If he pulls in this direction, same thing. It, no matter which way he goes, because th what's holding this in place is this, this uh, stick here. Now, another way to do it is cut out a notch so that this would fit into the notch. Right, you cut out a notch and, and that would fit inside the notch. Two ways of doing it. You can do it with a straight pole or you can find a, a little uh, V branch. And that's how you make your cuts. So that no matter which way the rabbit pulls, you got your snare set there. And the beauty of this, once you, once you have a, a, a spot that you set up a lot, say you got 30 snares that you like to set out. Well, once you prep 30, 30, uh, trails for your for your spring pole you're good to go so no matter which way the rabbit comes if he gets caught into the snare here that would be tied on here no matter which way he pulls the, any 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 direction on that toggle no matter which way he pulls he'll pull it free from this and lift the rabbit up into the air and what it really does is protect your your gates where you where you're making your snares so this is, uh, this is our, our traditional way of setting uh, uh, spring pole snares. Uh, you can do it, like, like I said, a straight pole with a notch cut in, out into it. I'll show you right quick. So that that fits in, in there, right? Or like that, you know? So there's different ways. And, and the beauty of this is you can make more adjustments. If that was a long straight pull, you can adjust it for the snowfalls. But now I'm gonna show you in a little bit a snare that I got and the setup I use for the flip ups that's even better. And I'll be using it for my spring poles as well because I think it's uh, the best system yet. A little bit of more work to prep, but once you got them made, they're deadly. And I have a video on my channel showing it. All right, so we'll, we'll move on and I'll get to a spot where I'll set up a flip up snare and a, uh, a spring pole for you guys. The beauty about spring poles and flip ups is once you've prepped your area, 
say if you're using the same trails year after year it's super fast all you you do is you come in you loop your, your string on bend it over or bring down the flip up and uh, put your snare in place and away you go by the way this was a part of skidoo trail gone right down to nothing last night it was up uh, for the most part eight degrees and raining I've never seen weather like this not this time of year this this is crazy and not calling for no cold weather for for some time we'll head on in here and I want to go up and, and walk a little bit of Bernardo's trail with you guys today maybe even having a boil up all right so we're heading that way these are I find the richest colors you'll ever find in nature beautiful the purples the blues the greens the yellow that come from a sap of a tree sap stick and look how it directs the the water around it can you guys see that so with my with my new toggle system the only thing I need is a little a little saw The only thing I would do is measure, see where that cut would need to be. Then put the cut right here. Don't have to go too far in. And now this will get tied. This will uh, go into the cut. And this will get tied to the, uh, to the spring pole or to the flip up and I have both right here so we'll uh, we'll do it right quick for you spring pull but spring it down string over top snare and everything up through bring this down oh hook it in place set up the snare as needed now the rabbit comes no matter which direction he pulls once he gets in here I'll just do it once he gets in here pulls on this bango up goes the spring pole and the rabbit is uh under that sets the snare really fast really hard because it's, it's a spring the bad thing about spring poles is winter the frost gets into the trees and they're being bent over for extended periods of time when the rabbit finally runs through the snare the snare is not as springy as what you would like it to be this is where the flip up comes into play because it is unaffected by frost. So you, you have your snare there, and then it's uh, just, the string is just looped around the end of the flip up. You got a little notch cut into the tree there that this new toggle that I designed um, sits into. And all this is, is sheet metal from Canadian Tire. Just cutting a little narrow strip, probably about a half inch uh, wide, and maybe maybe a half inch uh, little bend onto it. And all that does is just comes down, and it'll slip into one of the little recessed areas you have cut with your with your uh, with your saw. And now, if a rabbit comes in here, no matter if he goes this way. Or if he goes this way, this will slip out and, and, and guaranteed. And all that is is just tied right here to a tree. And the only thing you got, it doesn't have to be a big pole. It just got to have uh, the length or the, the weight to, to be heavier than that of a rabbit. Remember, rabbits are... Probably about three and a half pound. They're, 
snowshoe here. So if you got something that, that can lift up four and a half, five pound, you, you're, that's all you need. It's more than enough. Right? Rabbit goes that way, he's caught. Rabbit comes this way, he's caught. So this is the flip up. And that's how the flip up is done. And the flip up is not susceptible to frost. It will work good in the fall or winter, no matter what the temperature is. The only bad thing, on windy days, on windy days, if this is set out in the open, the tail end of that can catch a lot of wind. And if that gets wiggling around too much, it's gonna be uh, probably not attractive for one, not attractive for the rabbit to go into, or two, um, it may wiggle itself loose over time and you have a dry fire. Whereas a spring pole, is, it works good in early fall before the frost gets into the tree because this will be bent over and held in, in the bent position until the rabbit comes through. And if you get re, if you pull it over before the frost and then the frost comes, that doesn't want to go, that does that loses most of its spring. You know what I mean? And to swap it over, it's super quick, super easy. So to, to take this off, it's just like, uh, it's, it's identical to the, uh, what's one call it, snares I, I've been doing. Or you can just uh, take the loop and, and move it off to the end, right? So all you, all you really need to do is make your snare, create a loop, take that loop, pass it over the end of the spring pole. Hopefully you can see this. Pass it over the end of the spring pole, cinch it up tight, and then just drop it, drop it into place. Right, nothing to it. And when a rabbit gets caught in that, he pulls, bango, up he goes. And that, that, that comes up with a, with a good force. Probably force enough to, to break his neck, depending on your, on your spring. But if not, it'll, it'll guarantee to uh, tighten up uh, the loose. So that's, that's all I done there. So that, that, that's the setup for, for a spring pole. And with a little saw, that little saw that I use, all I do is just cut a little notch into the tree. And uh, you know, you can cut notches as the snow changes, you get snow, you get a mile, you get snow. So you, you can have, you're not cutting big notches in, you're only making little cuts. And you can do that with a, a old dead stick. You can take a dead stick, cut it off, pound it into the ground, or you can use a, one of these little bars or, or whatever that's alongside your trail and just make little cuts into it. And just enough so that this little 90 can slip into it and just bite onto it for, for a little bit and that's all you need. So uh, that's the spring pole. And we sat, we, we used to cut the traditional toggles, the one I showed you earlier. And, but you, you see the notch that you gotta cut out or you gotta drive down a V stick. Uh, or, uh, this is something I came up with in, in later years. I, I came up with this probably about seven years ago. I was like, geez, I had an idea and I thought, give it a try. And, and sure enough, it, it worked and it worked perfectly. So I hope that explains uh, well enough the difference between spring poles and flip ups. And uh, we used to use them for fox and lynx and rabbit. It's, it's a good system, it works well. And takes a bit of work to set up. Obviously you gotta cut a, a pole for a flip up or you gotta find a, a good location where there's a springy pole handy that you can use as a spring pole to, to set your snare. So you, you may be moving, you may wanna set your snare over there and you might have to, to walk in to find a good spring pole 
to, to, to put your, your snare, right? So, uh, a lot of people are, you just tie it to a stick and go on type thing. Well, sure, but this is the way you get, once you catch a rabbit, I never ever, ever had a broken snare with a flip up. Never ever had a live rabbit with a flip up. And never uh, did I have uh, mice or shrews eating it with a flip up. Well, um, uh, <coughs> I'm surprised. When you walk this trail, this is what we call Bernard Gatto's Trail. When you walk this in the fall, you can see where water runs down. And now look, I want to tell you, you can see how it, it hollowed out. So water run underneath the snow here the whole way. But with a little bit of codroy and, and a little bit of work, boy oh boy. This this could really be the the way to get to and from the groomed trails up above, you know. Now it's starting to rain. Uh, chance of showers. I'm going to uh, pack up and head down. I was going to have a boil up, but I wanted to get up here on the Bernard Gano Trail. Now I know up there, the further up we go, we get more to a boggy area and stuff. But there is places around here, and and down on the bog below, down on the bog down down here, absolutely no snow. The water come down through and, and, and took all the snow out of there. But all that would take is some uh, cordroyan or codroyan or whatever you want to call it, however it's properly pronounced. And and that's uh, for anybody who doesn't know, this where you take uh, material and, and put it on the trail. So that water is still allowed to flow underneath of it. But you build up uh, something to hold the snow on top. And hopefully when you get miles like this, the water can still do its, its job. It can still flow. Uh, but the snow is protected from the, the flowing water beneath due to the, the material in between. So normally you take some logs and you run it in the direction that the water travels. And then you put sticks across that and then bows over top of that and then the snow. So the water still has a, a beautiful channel to, to flow down. But, you know, that being said, there's still, there's still spots here where maybe we could uh, make a trail, keep it on the high ground. But remember when I was saying how, how rugged this area can be and is? Look, look at all the, 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 you have these big rock outcrops, eh? And these are glacier deposit rocks and stuff. So we're not gonna get rid of them. We're gonna navigate our way around them. I'm really shocked to see Bernard Gatto's trail looking this good. I was not expecting to see this. And there's a good, a fair amount of snow. You know, I, I don't know what I can, there's still six, eight inches of snow here. Whereas down below the road, wait till you see the video I'll, I'll, I'll take down there. See, there's still lots of snow after that huge, huge mile. And we're still into it today. But the, the beauty of Bernard Gatto's trail, very little work required other than cordroyan. But the pat is already there, you know? The pat is already there. If I was to go off on the side and make a new path. Now, we gotta open it up enough so that snow has a spot to come come down. Because there's more snow here on the trail than there is off the trail. I'll show you what I mean. Once we, once we come up in here, you don't, you don't see a lot of snow. And the reason being is the trees protect the snow from falling open areas you hold snow protected areas no snow so to have an effective trail system move up through here we would need to uh, I guess I would need to open it up and give it space for the snow to fall you can see what it looks like when water runs down through the true trails right So. 
But it's pouring rain there now. I'm not dressed for the rain. Therefore, I think I'm gonna call this adventure done. But I hope that answered your question about uh, spring, spring pole snares. And I can't remember who asked it. It might have been David Studley. I hope I'm seeing your name correctly. So it's really important uh, to try and, and navigate in areas where water don't flow, you know? To build your trail. Once winter comes, once you got your trail packed in good, you can you can withstand a few miles and and still keep on trucking, you know? Like it wouldn't be a lot of work, but I, I tell you right now, I'd knock down some of these trees here and uh, a person can have a really nice really nice trail up through the high ground it, it wouldn't take long to widen that out and knock down all these old stumps and trees and you can run run a ridge line where it's safe to do so to truly find out where where it is safe to do so mean, means you you got to you got to come up in the spring when there's no snow and then there's still good evidence of where water flowed throughout the winter and, and the, through the spring thaw my knapsack is down there on the tree i was going to i i planned on going up much further and doing a loop you know i want to to go up and break out on the bog up there <sighs> There's a couple different names on, on onto the bog, but I guess you go with the oldest family that was up here and they named it after a berry, the Squatchberry Bog or something like that there. Now, my family would uh, call some of the bog, bog berry that grows up there a uh, muck oak. So perhaps in honor of the first family up here, and in honor of my family, I'm gonna call that bog Mahok Bog. And uh, that's the name I'm gonna give it and refer to it as. Others can call it what they like, but from here on out, I'll refer to it as uh, Mahok, Mahok Bog. So I guess we're heading back down that way. But you can see, like, uh, this is Bernardino's trail, and you can tell where, you can see the hollow where water did flow down. I'm telling you, you walk this trail in, in the spring, and in the summer, and in the fall, and, and you would say that way too much water flows down this trail to even consider about scooting up through it. But now, now I'm rethinking what I've seen. From, from those walks. I wish the rain would stop. If the rain would stop, I'd keep going just to see where we hit water and how bad it, how bad it is, you know? I know water flows down there. I know it for a fact. And, and it has been, because we can see where it, the, the, the land, the snow sunk. You know, it didn't sink like that there on purpose. It, it sunk like that because of uh, of the water flowing down through, you know? And this is what I was worried about, you know, this is this is the Bernard Gatto Trail, but it is, is a good river running here, good flow. The temperature reached 12.3 degrees Celsius today on the 17th of January, 2023.